It is 602, calling to order meeting of the town of what they select for. Uh, item one minutes from the meeting. Meeting date. Okay, so August 8th. Any comment from the minutes? No comment here. No. I move to approve the meeting minutes from August 8th. Second. All in favor? Um, I don't know if I get to vote because I didn't get to vote back then, but. No, you, you, you get, I get to vote. You get to vote. I was yeah. there. Ooh. I was there, so I do get you, to vote. You, you okay. were there and you are here. Now I'm here. And sworn in. I know. <laughs> uh, then we pay roll warrants. Any comments? No uh, comments. None. Public comment. Any comment? Any input from the public? Take it to the public on items not on the agenda. Seeing no one here or online, move on. Scheduled appointment. We have housing committee members and Megan Rose from FERCOG to review the Town of Waverly's housing production plan and seek our approval. Megan, why don't you go ahead and present? Sure. Thank you all for having me tonight. So um, really quick recap. The town received a grant from the state about a year ago over a year ago to create a housing production plan. Um, since that time, I've been working with the housing committee uh, for Waitley to put together this housing production plan. That included doing public outreach surveys, collecting a lot of data um, to create a plan. And the housing production plan, the goal of that is to identify what the housing needs are in town, um, both for affordable housing and for just general, what are your housing needs in general for the town. So what we've done over the course of the year, working with the, both the housing committee and the planning board is to create a plan, which I think has been sent to you all. Um, it's a pretty lengthy plan. I, it's light reading, I know. Um, it has a lot, a lot of data per requirements of the state. Um, but the, the real gist of it is at the end, um, table 27, which provides um, about 20 recommendations or strategies that the town can use to potentially diversify its housing stock. Um, it mainly looks at zoning strategies in terms of removing some barriers to different housing types, maybe making housing more flexible. Um, it also looks at ways that the town can create partnerships with developers such as Habitat for Humanity and RDI, looking for grants to help with energy efficiency and accessibility modifications to help people keep stay in their homes and make sure they're still affordable. Um, the real um, part of, it's good to have a housing plan. It also, you guys kind of get a bonus because it will be, it can act as a chapter for your comprehensive plan, which you guys are gonna be doing shortly. Um, but what it also does is by adhering to all of the state requirements for a housing production plan, which is a very formal definition, um, the town can be protected against unwanted uh, affordable housing development um, if they have an approved housing production plan and they make progress towards creating some affordable housing um, if a town is below 10% of its current housing stock. And currently, Waitley only has 0.6% of your housing stock as considered affordable. So you definitely have some room for progress. <laughs> it is hard to do when you don't have sewer and robust infrastructure, um, but acknowledging that there are still ways to create more affordable housing or at least diversify your housing for different populations. Um, and so that's what this plan does. It provides a menu of options for the town to, to look at and as conditions change to pursue to diversify your housing stock. That is it in a real nutshell. I'm happy to turn it over to Kate to, to give her the housing committee um, any insight on what she, you know the, the plan and what they, she thinks it is doing for the town. Um, and then I'm happy to answer any questions and go into as much detail or less detail as you want. Kate, why don't you go ahead with whatever comments you want to make. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really grateful for the timing of having the plan and I've been really grateful for Megan's work. She's done, I think, a really great job. And this gives us a starting point, being a small town with no real staff resources to be able to do any pre-development work or, or real keeping up looking at sites at towns like Waitley don't really have a good opportunity to create housing, but with something this specific, it gives us some real concrete steps we can take over 
the short term and even the long term. And, um, you know, I think combine combining with increased work with the the planning committee and the housing um, planning board and housing committee together, you know, we can really actually make some changes that could get us to a point where, you know, we might be able to consider some projects, hopefully not too long from now. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm really pleased with the work that Megan's done. Um, I don't have any other sort of major points, um, but I'm really happy to answer any questions and talk about any small specifics or big picture specifics either way. Yeah, well, let me start thanking Megan for facilitating this. Um, you know, we have it in front of us. It's a lengthy paper and took a lot of work to put together. Uh, I've got a question for you for either Kate or Megan or Sylvie might be the person to answer or Brian. Are there any grants or opportunities which require us having produced a housing production plan? So you do get bonus points on grant applications, um, such as um, one-stop applications, if you do have a housing production plan. So that is actually another uh, reason to do something like this, to approve it. And so let me, I just want to kind of, another kind of big picture is the process for a housing production plan is to have both the planning board approve the plan, which they've done in July, have the select board approve the plan, and then you submit it to the state for their review. And then once that is done, then you'll have the official approved um, housing production plan. Okay, so the, the planning board has the way the planning board has already Sorry, signed, off. signed off, signed off, <laughs> yeah. debated it, made or requested a couple of changes, uh, did which were made and has approved it. Mm -hmm. um, Out of curiosity, what were the changes that were requested? Sure, there were. Apparently minor ones. Um, there were some tweaks about the zoning uh, language. Um, one of the planning board members was wanted to have as a um, idea to be included was to explore the idea of a mixed use zoning district in which explicitly both commercial and residential is mm -hmm. allowed to be together. Um, another request by the planning board was to re-examine the conservation subdivision because it hasn't been used since that ordinance was created. And we want to know why. Why is why are people not taking advantage of it? So that was a recommendation by the planning board to be included. Thank you. Okay. I also just want to make clear or clear up with you that this is if we approve it. An outline, it's not any sort of requirement, but it's it's a forward-looking, you know, future-looking plan for things we might do, but it's not committing yes, us to any particular one or more of these actions. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. It's very important. So it is a plan. It's just, and it has recommendations and that's all they are. Are I like to think of it as a really as a menu of options that you can pick from and choose, um, you know, like, oh, we've got this town on property now. We didn't have that before. What does the housing production plan say we should do with it? Oh, you know, it really recommends that this site would be really great for a two family housing, you know, unit. Um, things like that. So it, it does not re require you to do anything. You're not beholden to do anything that's in this plan. Right. Right. Um, yeah. But but when we're looking at planning options, we should go to the plan and see if there are right needs that we might go about doing things. That right. 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 It gives some options for the planning board to consider to maybe reduce some of the barriers to having affordable housing in a community like Waitley. So some of the zoning changes or that the planning board could consider are listed in that table and it's going to be a sort of up to the planning board to make to to talk through if any of those feel like ones they'd be interested in making or not over the short and long term and we, we have made the list a very comprehensive robust list of potential recommendations um because they they are definitely options for the town, but also as I mentioned, you do get uh, grant application bonus points if you have a housing production plan. But if you also if you're looking for assistance with say revising your conservation zoning bylaw, and you have that actually mentioned as something a need that you need in the town, you're more likely to have that grant application awarded. So that's another by having a lot listed, it kind of it gives you that framework to get more funding. 
Okay. Any more? No more questions. Um, no, I mean, I'm, I, I think basically discussing um, table 27. It's like that's really kind of the, the the heart of it, and I've got probably like a million questions about that, but this might not be the place for that. Like the very first thing says, um, it's about accessory apartments, and I think we already have those by right. And this talks about having it by right with a lot of other things, like you know, nine hundred square feet and so on. So I might be I might be wrong. Maybe we don't have it by right, but um, I remember voting at a town meeting. Uh, uh, to to allow those by right and not uh, special permit anymore, but that doesn't matter. I, I feel like as I'm reading through them, um, a lot of these make sense for a town like ours to increase the housing supply mm -hmm. by way of accessory apartments. But it's perfect sense for a town with an aging community, I think. Um, and uh, some of these are like reducing barriers for developers to make affordable housing. And I don't know how well those would actually work not being a developer myself. But, um, I, I really appreciate, I just want to say, I, re I appreciate this. And this is a place where um, that's where kind of all the, the rubber hits the road, I think. Um, the you know, Looking at these and kind of deciding which ones are really, because they're all kind of marked, no, not all, uh, but many of them are marked high priority. And so it's not necessarily easy to say which one you can do first. Yeah, well, that, that's indicated. It's not yeah. a requirement. This is right. You can pick right. and choose we, and we do whatever. Some. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I like about it. Want. Any more comments? I have a yeah. question that probably isn't about the housing plan per se. Um, it might be about where we go to think about this other thing, which is that if we are looking at having a significantly larger aging population, is there any way to plan for trying to diversify our population, both um, by age and by race? And to the, it, the plan. It's a great question. I think that's something I've thought about for many years. Yeah. Sorry. That's Go fine. On. I'm sorry. I thought you were. Yeah. Um, it's something I've thought about for many years on the housing committee because. For appropriate community development, I do think that we need to really spend some time. We want to be able to support the people who are aging at their homes to be able to stay in their homes to the extent that we can. And, you know, the town has places and things like Valley Neighbors to help sort of support that. Um, but in addition, I really feel like the community needs to attract some young people um, so that we have new families in town as well, so that we continue having enough vibrant life in Waitley to be able to, you know, fill the schools and have kids playing on playgrounds. And so um, from a strategy perspective, in terms of thinking about what types of housing we might want to have in Waitley, I do think that we want to sort of think about having a mix. And one of the pieces in that mix are probably what I would call sort of starter homes that are less expensive than the average house that comes on the market here many young families or people getting ready to start families cannot afford to buy into our community. And so um, that's one of the things I sort of have in the back of my head um, as something I'd like to work on in the medium term in terms of creating housing. Sounds great. Yeah, it strikes me that a, a healthy community is a diverse community. Right. Can't afford to go too far one way or another. Right. Okay. And part, is there any, the, uh, yeah, sure. No, I was just say part of the plans why it's so long is it does go into a lot of that detail of demographics for the town, both currently and the projections and yeah. school enrollment, declining school enrollments, and the fact that the population is aging. So it kind of builds that case. And so for when um, the planning board or housing committee wants to take one of the actions that's in the plan they can look to the plan to say okay here's why we need to do this it provides kind of that background information to at least start that conversation great okay. thank you thank, thank you. you uh i see judy martin then from the planning board judy do you have any comments or uh input from the planning board's deliberations on this 
Well, the planning board reviewed the the plan and the recommendations, and we suggested a few that Megan was nice enough to adopt and, and the housing committee. Um, we do plan to start working on, on some of the zoning recommendations. We, I think the committee felt that it was not appropriate to, to endorse them at this point, but to work further to figure out which ones are appropriate and how they should be in yeah, there, there what are sequence they should, should be adopted. Planning board, things that the planning board yeah. would, would need to address. Yeah, that, you're, yeah, that, you're you will, to that you will need to set your priorities as to, but yeah, uh, yeah. they're, they're, they're got the brunt of the list. So right, talking about prioritizing and managing what's a reasonable right. amount mm -hmm. of change for any one period of time. And, yeah, and what, yeah. What, what, are, what are the most important changes to work on yeah. first and then yeah. from there? Okay, so the, but the planning board has approved this and yes, you're happy to get to work on... Oh, we can't wait. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? No. Um, As usual, I have one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, there was mention in the report of uh, water districts, uh, water uh, protection, zone two and yeah. zone three. My understanding at present is that those are moving parts, uh, mm. that, that there's a possibility that the those, maps aren't clear. The That's maps aren't yeah. clear or that those will change. I just wanted to say that out loud. Mm -hmm. well, I could... yes, Judy, Judy, yes. Judy, yes. Um, the planning board discussed those in some length. What happened is the when the water district wells were closed, then then the that justification for that aquifer overlay district disappeared. Oh, okay. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we also talked about the fact that a lot of the operating conditions these things were put in in the early 90s and climate change has changed things. The fact that we now only have one water district when there were two before has changed things. And a lot of the things that people are concerned about in water have changed in that time period. I mean, PFAS was, was not at least as I never heard of it until the last two or three years. So what we would like to do is step back and do a new geological, hydrological study and figure out where the boundary should be rather than just taking away the ones for the for the district. And, yeah. and I think I will be on my list of things to talk to Sylvia about is to keep her eye open for grants to do that because we obviously don't have the funding. Great, thank, thank you. Be prepared to hear about that. So uh, that, that goes into the long list of things already on here. For the planning board yes, and the front floodplain bylaw, and we have two or three others. Okay. Um, We're going to have to double our salary. Oh, we will triple your salary. Right. You get yeah. yeah. Maybe double your staff. Right. <laughs> that would help too, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else? I'm all set. And the, okay. Um, I think it's a. Hardy, thank you. And a round of applause before right. we vote. A lot of work. Thank you. And I'm inclined to. Yeah. To, Passes. We yeah. we have yeah. the time to go through as the planning board does, and uh, yeah. we will no, they certainly think, rely on their expertise. Yeah, I spend absolutely. a fair amount of time going through yeah. it, and it's yeah. pretty exhaustive. Yes, yeah, and exhausting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, could I make a motion then that we accept the housing plan as presented? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Megan. Thank, Thank you, Kate. You. Thank you, Judy. Great, thank and you. Thank you, Select Board. And any other planning board and housing committee members that may be listening? 
great. Uh, and just order our business. There should have been a letter. I think that I'd sent to Sylvie and Brian that you need to sign to send to the yeah. state with the plan. Yeah, okay. we, oh, it's already got a sticky we, note. We, on we have it here with sticky notes of where we have to sign it. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Well, I just see one. So it's just a friend. Okay. Why don't we've got a, I know we've seen Mr. Coca here regarding the drainage pipe. Why don't we move that to IOD and the whole bit? Sorry. COVID tests are still available at town offices, free to town residents. Old business. We're going to move item D up to the top of that and let Mr. Coca go. Brian, do you have any reporting on that issue? Yeah. So um, the last time uh, this is what we had discussed this issue. There were really two items that we were going to look into. One was whether we could um, get a sewer cam, a sewer camera to, to scope out uh, the pipe and try to figure out what was going on. That was uh, helping the water to keep in the water to pond up on this. If I can just prop interrupt it. just for anyone listening, this is the drainage issues along Christian Lane and the drainage pipe system that runs through much of East Waitley. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so uh, Wayne Metkoski was able to uh, borrow a camera from the Mass Rural Water Association uh, for no cost. And um, they brought it out and we were able to look in the pipes on both the, um, the south side and the north side of Christian Lane. Uh, and the south side is the is the side that uh, that we were more concerned about because there was the, there was no drainage happening um, from Mr. Kogat's property. And what they found, other than small fish, were that um, there was roots infiltrated into the pipe, mm -hmm. um, and it was causing a, a pretty much near blockage of the pipe that wasn't letting water or anything else pass through the pipe on the south side. Um, on the north side, there were some there were some areas where roofs were infiltrating into the pipe, but there wasn't there was there were no complete blockages, so that side was still functioning, um, you know, somewhat of a normal capacity. But I mean, we, we all presume that the pipe's old; it's a clay tile pipe or something. So it's you know, it's not it's not a solid pipe, and, and roofs can get inside of it and cause problems. So that seems to be the the immediate issue is that there's a blockage in the pipe on the south side of the road, um, or the pipe on the south side. Um, and that pipe actually travels a ways from Mr. Kogat's property um, east. Yeah, it goes yeah. east, right? It goes east, um, you know, across the, the house that's adjacent there. And that's where they think that the blockages and then it crosses the road further up, you know, further east. It doesn't cross the road immediately where that pipe begins on the edge of uh, Mr. Hogan's property. So, um, so, so the blockage um, is, 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 there's a blockage and it's, it's on that pipe on the south side. Um, so that's, that's the, you know, that's an immediate issue. That's likely what's causing it. Uh, but it's also long term. so after that blockage, so they don't know. Can, can you see past the block? I believe so. To yeah. see that, okay, yeah. so they're able to get by that. Yeah, there's the different blockage. access points. Oh, okay. In the in the system, there's different trains oh. that. Get so so we think, if we think we know, like uh, we have a picture of what it is the whole way. It's not just oh, here's a blockage, here's a blockage. Once those are out of the way, we can tell what's beyond there. We actually. Because of different access points for right. the camera, we're able to actually map out the whole thing. And so the assessment of where the blockages are and what they are is pretty important. That's my understanding. Okay. Um, and the, where the you know where the where the blockage matches up where where there is a tree, obviously, and um, yeah. So okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but, so that's really the short term issue. The long term issue is it's, I don't know, let's take a guess. It's 90 year old pipe. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I'm not advocating for tree removal, but you know, I'm not advocating for tree removal, period. But roots 
roots will return. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know, even if they were cut out with some type of low mover type that you clear the pipe, it's a temporary fix because the roots will seep water and there's water in the pipe. So we know what's going to happen. Um, and the, the longer term issue is that the, system, the, the system's old. Mm -hmm. So if we're, you know, if we're expecting all of these uh, heavier precipitation events, then you know, uh, a restricted pipe is not going to drain fast, or it's full of water. It's not drain at all. Um, we could have got we could have gone kayaking one <laughs> one time in the front yard. There, but yeah. yeah, I was looking for a pontoon boat that week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what we think is physically going on. I think that's it. Uh, the other the other question was could the town could the town records show us sort of who paid for the pipe, or when did it go in, all of those types of things. And I would just say it's inconclusive. Mm -hmm. um, when we look back, uh, obviously we look for appropriations, because right. so the, the town meeting there inside of really the place to go. Um, and there were uh, four successive years in 35, so 1935, 36, 37, 38, where there were town meeting articles each of those years to appropriate a thousand dollars um for equal road which is christian um but it doesn't it doesn't say what the money is for mm -hmm. and it's not that's not extraordinary to appropriate money mm -hmm. i mean we see those articles from different roads across town mm -hmm. didn't specify drainage or mm -hmm. like that. so um and, and at the time that was the the way they they did it so if we were doing that today our town meeting article would have to say what more specifically what it's for. And typically that's typically that that would be our practice, yeah. Okay. And we'd say it was the same amount for consecutive years. And yeah. you know, thirty-five to thirty-eight, but there was no bump in any year like when a different project would have been undertaken. Right. It was just thousand dollars each year. Yeah. And then it, I mean, we started looking at the forties, and it, you see the same thing actually for Haydenville Road. It was, you know, a, a set sum, and it was just each year they would put this much more and do the work that they really presumed. Um, there was additional uh, after the, the nineteen thirty eight article. Uh, there was an article in nineteen thirty nine uh, that failed. It was the same for a thousand dollars, and there was an article in nineteen forty three. Same idea, thousand dollars from the road, but those were rejected by the voters. Um, and then in 1949, there was an article, um, and it, it read to authorize the selectmen to relay and lower or replace the drain on the south side of Evo Road on the property of FL Fair and under the highway to more effectively drain the surplus highway water from land of the butters and raise and appropriate any money therefore. Um, that article was rejected. By residents, um, according to the, the town meeting minutes, um, and after that, we don't see um, around that time period. We don't see any other articles that would, um, show us one way or the other. Um, so, and we also did some deed research on some of the properties, um, and there's no mention of any of any drainage easements. You know that 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 would benefit the town, so the town would be the beneficiary of the easement, which would be an indication that the town would have owned it or, or done the work. Um, uh, I don't know that it's all. I don't know that it's uncommon at, at that time to just sort of do the work and worry about the and not worry about the legalities of it. Um, but I don't know what the practice of the town was at that point. But you can infer that some smaller towns may just put on a handshake or you just get that permission to, to, to lay the pipe and it functions and everybody forgets about it for 90 years. 90 years. Yeah. Um, Except in this case, there doesn't seem to have been any money appropriated to do it. Uh, so yeah. not that we could find in our research. Yeah. Nothing close. Um, right. Right. There, right. So there's money to improve the road, but I can't. I don't know what it was used for. Uh, the records aren't clear. Um, so, 
So that's yeah. that's a lot of no answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, but, that's it, it's just like, but at least compared to last time, we have looked and not found as opposed to last time we had we, we were guessing and, and kind of guessing about it. But yeah, okay. Well, as far as we can tell, then there's no the town doesn't seem to appear to have any ownership interest in the strange interest, but it doesn't yeah. appear that the town ever paid for it. There's no record of it. There are no easements. Um, it appears to have been a privately installed, whether by Mr. Farrick or other neighbors. I don't know. Um, and thus, as far as I can tell, the town shouldn't have any responsibility for it. Um, Mr. Kodak, do you have any comment? Um, through years, Christian Lane has been built up higher and higher, and all that runoff is going on to my property, which goes down into that, and that pipe is the only drainage on Christian Lane, other than the fact across the railroad tracks in front of Yankee Candle, there's two access pits right there. Other than that, there's no drainage on Christian Lane. I'd like to know when there's going to be drainage put on Christian Lane. Is one of my you know, mm, yeah. I mean, I see you're doing work on Egypt Road over there. And this, they're putting in that's the water loop, yeah. That's the water loop, the water loop, yeah. That's for water yeah. source, the uh, yeah, that, water that, that's, that's not a drainage, yeah. 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 It's a Fred Alaska, uh, Fred Alaska is a property owner on Christian Lane in, in the, this area that was referred to in the. 1948 uh, town meeting that whole side that was undeveloped. Uh, no, there was no houses on that side. That's why there was concern for drainage for the fields. My property was built shortly after that. Just like well, Mr. Kogatz probably was there before then. Uh, looking at the, at the right of way that's there today for the highway, to me, it appears that all the, the drainage structures that are along that road are within the highway right away. You can see the actual bounds, stone bounds that are on the side of the road today, uh, especially on the south side. And if you measure out, I don't know what the right away standard right away width was, what five rods or, or whatever whatever rod dimension was. You go 50 feet. On the uh, north side of Christian Lane, and you're going to run into all of the drainage structures on the north side. And the reason they're that far out on the north side is compared to the south side. The south side, the right of way from the road is five to six feet off the edge of the pavement. So if you're going to collect stormwater runoff, run you're going to put the drainage basins next to the side of the road on town property. That's why there's no easements on fabrics or anybody else's. If you look on the north side of the road where there's some sloping drainage, you put the, you put a drainage structure where you're going to catch the water at the bottom of the slope, not near the top of the road, unless you're going to put a curb and gutter to collect all the water. So the ones on the north side will put it at the bottom of the slope on town property. You can see that. There, there is, uh, like I say, bounds that are there. The surveys have been done on Christian Lane. The APR property next to mine had a survey done. The proposed cannabis on the north side had a survey done. The solar farm had a, so had a survey done. You can actually, somebody needs to go and you can see where the boundaries are for the highway because that was all surveyed. Uh, if you look at the assessor's map, that doesn't tell you. What the, what the right of way width is, because it puts the road in the center of the path and you assume it's in the center. It is not that way. I know on my property, one side is five feet from the edge of the road, it's the boundary, and at the other end, it may be 15 feet. Right. So it varies. So if you go five feet from one side of the road, you take the width of the road 20 feet plus another 25 feet. That's where all the drainage structures are. Is in that in that highway right away. The other thing that you can see just driving through there 
Look at where the telephone poles are. Look at where the fire hydrants are. They're all on town property. On the south side, you can see them closer to the road because the town doesn't own that much property on the south side. On the north side, they're further away because there's more, more right away that the town owns and property. Yeah. So, are, also, are, just, I have a quick question for Fred. Um, are you claiming then that this structure is on town property? I don't know. I'd have to ask Mr. Cole. Okay, I, 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 yeah, I think Brian's research, the one, one part that I was conclusive about was that the structure is not located on town property. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Because I don't know. Uh, I know, cause, cause you, but you were just talking about things that were on town property. So, right. I, I was trying to make the connection. Right. Right, and, and Keith did, a, a highway superintendent, did repair one of the drainage structures on the south side of the road that's uh, probably three feet off the edge of the pavement right. two or three years ago because that's where the original one was that, that failed. So that was in the highway right away, three feet off the edge of the pavement. So there has been work done by the town. To, and, and I think the structure itself was, was damaged, repaired, and some part of the inlet and mm -hmm. I don't think much else after that was done. But, uh, so that gives you some idea on that side of the road where the right away is because he did it within town property. If it was private structure and somebody else did it and we had no idea, why would Keith have been there and fixing it? Yeah, I, I guess the part that confuses me is that we've got structures yeah. that are not on town property, right. fine. And yes, we repair things that are on town property. That all sounds right. But I don't get. I don't understand how they're related to each other here in this specific well, case. Well, because because on both sides of the road there there is drainage pipes that connect from yeah. from the old manhole, and they're within the highway right away, the town right away. Because as Brian was saying, right. But that's not the thing that needs repair. The thing that needs repair is outside of the town's right away. No, no, it's inside the town right away. So there's uh -huh. nothing outside the town right away. Yeah, no, no that's that's incorrect. <laughs> It's in the middle okay, of our excuse, lawn. Excuse, excuse me. Uh, your name? My name is Tom Borowski. We bought the Ferrex house. Yeah, it's okay. 144. Okay, now, now you can go ahead. Okay, okay. We'll and uh, that pipe goes about 15 feet off the highway, probably 10 feet from our house. So we came home and there was blue marks all over our, our yard. We had no idea why they were there. It was in our front yard. Um, that pipe is in the middle of our yard. We have the deeds, there's no easement. We had no idea that was even there when we bought the place. There's no indication at all. So you're gonna dig that up, you're gonna dig up our front yard, you're gonna make a mess, it's gonna cause you our driveway, yeah. everything. It's a mess. So is, is that within the highway right away? No, no. way. No, no, no. no it's not our property. It's our and and it's, it's a good 15 feet yeah. off the road. It's probably 10 feet from Come our house where those two marks were in the middle of our yard. Dude, how far away is the main structure? You should go out there. It's a lot farther. It's probably 25, 30 feet. Sorry, right away. Whereas it goes up. And then there's a rights of ways. There's a catch basin on the outside. It's got to get you up. It's an idea. So if you're saying that there's there's the town owns five feet. Yeah. Well, on the south side, by my property, that's what it is. I got the markers. But you're also saying yeah, but, it goes from 15 feet down to 5 feet. So, well, yeah. Well, yeah. so in our, for our system, 5 feet, ours is about 15, yeah, yeah, 15, 15 20. Yeah, it's, 15, quite, 20. it's quite a ways to be close yeah. Okay, Even but, if we cobble it together, is it possible to get a visual representation of what you're talking about and what you're talking yeah, about? Right. I think um, even if we like sit yeah, down and say, "This is where my property is, and this is the line," because it's a little hard to um, envision it as you're talking. Uh, I'm sure you see it every day, so it's not hard to envision. But it would be easier for us to discuss if we can see laid out. I, I also think we've got a bigger overall question of. Whose responsibility it is right. for maintenance of the system? Is it a town responsibility to maintain the system or is it private? And that largely gets back to who installed it in the first place. Was it a town 
project? Was it a private project? Was it some combination? And well, that's, I also, I'm sorry. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to figure out. It sounds like some of the pipe is probably under the town right of way. And some of it absolutely is because of Some of it absolutely is. The road. And there are no easements. And so we're trying to unravel things that were not done in the 1930s that would have been done now as far as getting easements and doing the formalities. Yeah. So we're going to have to try to untangle this. Why would, why would the town people have voted town line back in the 30s to make improvements to the drainage on that road? They, they did. They, they did. They, they, vote, they vote the, as what it appears is that they voted $1,000 a year for yeah. maintenance for work on the road in general, as well, they I, as they voted it for other roads that did not have the drainage. No, I, I, that's not what I heard Brian Brian saying, but but why would the town vote on 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 spending money on private property? So it had to be on on town property if the town was voted for three years to spend money. The, the, the money. But, but, the, but the the thing, Fred, they didn't put the purpose for the money right. in I a very understand. precise way. So it could have been for gravel. It could have been for anything. But it would have been on town property. Why would they but, spend money off but it, 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 it may, yeah, yes, they would have spent that money for something on town property, right? right. right? Okay, fine. It's not related to this. We have no idea that it was related to this drainage we, project there's no, at all. There's no evidence that it's related to the to this drainage System. Okay. That's what we're saying, and maybe you're trying to say the same thing. Okay. The other, the other incident where where the town highway department did did address drainage on Christian Lane it was further down by the intersection where where Carrick's property goes through. There, there was an issue. I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, where one of the property owners on the south side, I think, was, was complaining that the water was backing up. Well, the, the town did an inspection and, and did some work at that location because that was draining uh, draining uh, roadway water onto private property. And they did do some work within the highway right away. You can see and, the structure and something and, and, and that like, may well like the other one. I, so, I wasn't here. I don't remember that. But the extent of the water that we're talking about, right. the lake that was <laughs> on that property a few weeks ago, is not just road water. That is drainage from a wide area. So we're talking about a drainage system right. that is not just draining Christian Lane water. We're talking about a system that's draining a, a large amount of acreage so that, you know, if the town's responsible for Christian Lane water, that's one thing. But we're talking about much more than that as far as what the system is designed or supposed to do. So so even even if someone you know at the Lone Plain Road or the end of that had an issue with town water draining, okay, that may well be. But that isn't still not the issue here. Okay. We're, to we're talking about a deteriorating system which is draining a large area and who is responsible for that. So the, I think the real issue is, is the town responsible or not being, with most of it being on town property? It's a question, I, I guess. Well, the, I think we have not yet ascertained we, that it's on town property. We've not ascertained that it's on, on town mm -hmm. property. We've not ascertained that it's a town owned and operated system. And somebody needs to, needs to look at that. Well, it, it, yeah. That's the point. That's what we, we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. But from what we've determined so far, there's no clear indication that the town ever paid for any part of this. <clears throat> Not, nothing that indicates that any money appropriated by town meeting was for was for the purpose of a drainage system. A lot of work they did and tell you exactly. Well, exactly. But they didn't say. They, they didn't say, but lacking that the I would say that the burden of proof is on the, the people who want the town to pay for it to show that the town is responsible well, it's in, if it's in town right away why would a private person why that's with town property the, we're first not of all, clear we're, that it's in the town right away and we're, and we're talking about this whole system and there's 
It's a large interconnected system, not just the area in front of your three houses. And most, the great majority of it is not on town property. It's well, running. It's running. Assumption that's not mine, but well, it, it, it's a large system that runs through yeah. much of East Wake and up Long Plain Road towards the, where the school is now, and we don't know. And what we do know is there's no indication that it was installed by the town, and that is a town structure. I'm the sorry. Town yes. Don't work on it. The town has done work on that it. That doesn't. Why would the town do it if it wasn't town property? Two, two wrongs don't make a right. If we, if the town incorrectly worked on it at some point, that doesn't mean that we do it. If the town correctly worked on it, then yes, we should. But right now, we don't have that indication that there's any ownership interest of the town in that system. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, so I own one. No, I'm sorry. The name My name is Scott Pekoski, yeah. and I own 149 Christian Lane. My brother Wayne. Yeah. And I was born and raised there. And where Fred is talking, mm -hmm. he did work on the opposite side of the road of our house. Yeah. There's a catch basin on our land where the water comes across, where it keeps fixed. And when there's heavy rain, it boils up onto our lawn. It goes down this, to the next house, the Smorowski's house, to the drainage there. You go a little way down, one by Fred Morton's house. And then it goes right through Tommy Wash uh, Stanley Washleski's property under his ravine, under his driveway to get to his barn, which that collapsed already, which I can bring him into town too, because he's kind of mad too. And then it goes into Long Plain Road and it funnels out there. So what Fred is saying, everything that's on our side of the road, on the south side of the road, yeah. the town should be maintaining. If Keith fixed in front of our driveway, on top of the road, they should be, if you're, you're taking water off of Christian Lane and putting it into that man, that catch basin, Coming across the street now onto my property, onto Eddie Smarowski's property, now onto Fred Morton's property, cross Wash Leskis down on the Long Plain Road, the town needs to do something about that. What Jeffrey said is right. You keep building the road up, building the road up, building the road up. I don't want water on my driveway. I don't want water on my grass. Let the town put the water in the drainage tank. This has been an issue for 50, 60 years it's, that the town good. needs to start it's thinking good. about doing. It, because it, what gives you the right to drain town water onto our property? I understand where he is. That pipe is, yeah, it's in the middle of his yard that goes through his thing, and then it crosses over in front of our driveway, which Keith fixed that manhole. I think two years ago, Freddie fixed yes, it. Yeah. But everything that's on our side of the road, that the town water from the road is drained on there, he should be maintaining that. And like I said, I can get Michael Wasilewski here because his road that goes through the back of his property, that bridge collapsed. Why are we taking water off the, the, the town road and putting it onto our land? That's not right. It's a big issue here. I, I, I understand it. On the water on my property. Yeah. I understand it's a big issue. But, but the town is draining the water off of Christian Lane. And Keith knows about this yeah. because you need to put drainage from the railroad tracks down to the river. This been, this was mentioned five, six years ago, probably 20 years ago and, that it's been mentioned. And the system was put in 80 years ago. But you to, don't to, I to understand it was put in 80 years ago. But tell me a question. Where is the town water from the road draining? Where is it draining? And you got the road built up. You can turn into our driveway now. Are we going to live like this now? You keep but, building the road. So where is the water from the town road going? The town road. The Where's water, it going? The water from town road is on Christian Lane. Yeah, wait, where's it going? Like, excuse the water from the town road on Christian Lane is, is going the same place the water is draining off of every town road, whether it is Haydenville Road or North Street so drain, or Egypt Road, road or any place else. Water drains off of town roads onto private property it's everywhere. But it doesn't pond for days. It, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't. In some, in some places, it may well. Where else is it pond? So going up Payton, there, there are ponds off each of road that form. So going up Payton Road, oh, what did you do there? Where's all that new drainage that we'll put on Payton Road oh, when the weight land up? Where's that water go? Can I you make a suggestion? Can I stop everybody yeah, for just so a second? I don't think we can adhere to an eighty or ninety year old system being 
purchased or built by the town or not and bring that forward into what's happening right now. I do think, I don't think we can make it a, it's not a town responsibility and it's not a citizen responsibility. It's all of us. We're all citizens. We all live in the town. We and care we, about the citizens in the right. town. We'd like people to be comfortable. And perhaps the situation has changed since 80 or 90 years ago yeah. when it was built. And so we may want to look at whether the town takes partial ownership of something that affects I'm not saying we do, but I'm saying we might want to consider the, the, looking the, the, at whether, hang on, let okay. me finish, and then I'd like to yeah. hear what you have to say, whether the town takes partial ownership of it and that we don't stand stubbornly on the town never owned it. The situation is what it is today, and we need to look at it today. To me, the question is not whether there's a problem. There is a problem on Christian Lane. Right. The problem is if the town undertakes to resolve it, do we have to then resolve similar problems on every town road for every resident? We look at situation it, by situation, it, don't we? Well, the climate well, is well, changing. It, it, once we begin to pay for drainage off of town roads onto private land in one place, yes. we'll get applications from ever, wherever in town water is going on to private property. And that that's the question of if we have a specific responsibility in the case of this water system, was it a town responsibility? Because otherwise, every road in town could be subject to people coming at us, looking for money. I think to, that's to, jumping the gun. I think we need to investigate whether this is the I'm situation. looking at set, setting a precedent. You need to look at each location individually. No, but you're not but you can't. You, when, Fred, when you set, you set a precedent, that. Right, so when like you set my, a precedent, like my train, Fred, it, it's in the layout. I just had that property surveyed we, yeah. with the canvas company. That drain on my lawn is in the town layout of the town road. Can so you're telling me that's my survey? responsibility? Can, can we, we look at your survey have... and the surveys that you were talking about yeah. from the adjacent properties yes. and cobble together some kind of... And I will get Mr. Washelewski with his deed to see where that right. pipe goes through his property. But, but the, the question isn't restricted to where the drain the immediate drainage is it's the entire system because if the water goes into your catch basin and flows out freely then it's not a problem the question is ma ma is maintaining the pipes in the system right and that if they are blocked that's what's causing the problem, not necessarily your catch base in the year. But it's at like, your property. I don't know what your name is. Julie. Julie. But like she said, Fred, so now three years down the road, Keith goes and overlays that road, adds another half inch to an inch. Now you bring that road up even more. 10 years, 15 years down the road, now you go to, and you don't put no drainage. Where's the water going? It's going on all of our property. The only place that's on private yeah. property is their house. Is, is there more water going onto your property because the road is 10 inches high? Because the pipe is all collapsed. That's a, that's a different story. That That's what I was getting at. Is the question is, where's the pipe collapsing? Who's responsible for the pipe? Well, it, but you're saying they're raising the road. The same amount of water is going to flow in that square footage, whether the road but, is, but is, is, is at ground level or okay. 10 inches up. Well, well it, it's... Am, I'm in am, am, I wrong? About the am I wrong that the height of the road doesn't matter? The same amount of water coming down and draining off? Right, but it's draining onto, like on my side, that's the town property. So the town should be maintaining mine, my neighbors, the next one. Those are, that's on town layout property. The town should be maintaining those. So, uh, just so like, yeah. pretty much, I think on our side of the road, yeah. I don't know about down where they are. Yeah, that's a different issue. But like our side of the road, when they come with that back truck, they should suck out the one that Keith fixed, and they should suck out the other three that are down the road. I, I don't. I would have to talk to Keith. They don't, I don't. I don't, they don't do it because they're saying it's on private property, which is not because I just got a survey. Well, then, then let's get the survey. Then okay. let's get yeah. the survey, so, and if yeah. those catch basins are on town property, and Keith should be vacuuming that. Then he, yes, he should be, but that still doesn't solve the problem of a collapsed pipe, and right, who's, and, 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 on the middle and, and, and whose responsibility that is. No, yours, well, right. yours, you have one. Yours be, is be, 
because the collapse doesn't drain either. So it goes across the road and it's better. Or yours doesn't drain either. No, right. so it's no, it bubbles out. The, the, the collapse well, pipe is the problem, not the catch basins being vacuumed. It's the system, so it's the system just, not draining the water off. Correct, but Fred, if his is collapsed, what's the water going to do? Now it's backing up this way to the east, and what's it doing yeah. to the other catch it? Boiling out of the ground. Right, but, we, we understand that. We, the problem is the collapsed pipe. Right. If that got fixed, the other thing probably wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Or it, 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 it shouldn't it should, it should, it should, it right. be a problem. It, it shouldn't be a problem except possibly in a rain that we got last month. So but it's, it's it's an issue. I'm not saying now, but it's an issue down the road that the town needs to start looking it's at. It's an issue. I think it's an issue down the road that we all need to start looking right. at because it is yeah. an aging drainage system right. and right. there's a place where roots came through right. and blocked it. Now, who knows what would happen to an 80 or 90 year old system in another five years? So there's got to be some kind of solution. Let's look at surveys. Let's figure out where the town right of way is. Let's figure out where yeah. private property is. And it might be a bigger solution than any of us are imagining, or it might be something simple. God only hopes that it, you know, costs five bucks and it's easily taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unlikely, but you know, let's not argue about whose responsibility it is. Right. It's a problem. Let's look yeah. at it and figure it out. Well, no, we're custodians of the taxpayers' money. It is well, there is a matter of whose responsibility. Yeah, but they're taxpayers too. So am no, I. No, but <laughs> right. we we we're not in the business of selectively giving money to individual taxpayers to solve their problems. All right. right. Because as I said before, you invite yeah. everyone else. With a similar yeah. problem, if he was someplace coming else. and saying that his private well was overflowing and it was our fault, I mm -hmm. might have an issue with that. This yeah. is a mystery yeah. so far. It would definitely a unique yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's an old, yeah. old yeah. system that was probably yeah. done by a handshake, and now it's yeah. and and now it's an issue. We've, yeah. we've, 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 issue. we've got to work. I just happen to be at the end of the line or beginning of the line, whatever. Yeah, it just. I, I, I think I just been selected for the individual. I, I, I think we may need to to get you or someone need to figure out what is needed to get the system working. How does that? I mean, how would we get? Let me give you a question for Brian. How would we get an accurate map that shows what's in the town layout? Where is the road within the town layout? Where are these catch basins that are within the town layout? Where are the pipes that are underground, both inside and outside of the town layout? Does that map already exist somewhere? If it doesn't, how do we get an accurate map? There, there may be piecemeal maps, like like Scott was talking right. about, on, on, yeah. By, yeah. on a parcel by parcel basis, yeah. but we can't find any. Can we task one of you with chat to say, but we need you collecting the information? Yeah. Can we task one of you with collecting the information from your private surveys and from neighbors' yeah. surveys and adjoining parcels and bringing it to another meeting or sending it to Brian ahead of time so he can compile it? Because I know I can get Michael Wasilewski because he wants to fix that, but same yeah. thing. Can, can we task one of you with doing yeah. that? Because I don't think it's something where you, you probably don't really want the town to come in and impose a solution on this, right? You want to be a part of the solution. Right. I'm and, looking for volunteers. But, Come on. But, you know, also, so, yeah. Ultimately, what this, as most things come down to, is who's going to pay for it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And, and that, that right. cuts, and it, cuts, and cuts to the nub of it. Is what, right. how, how big is the problem and who's going to pay to fix? Right. And like you said, where it goes in front of our driveway onto our side, if that pipe is messed up across the road, now what happens? Now we're well. I'm not just going to go. But I, I think we, we 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 did the the look in the system, and yeah. the blockages are not across under the road. Yeah. Yeah. Like the block is somewhere. Yeah. Right. Or right. at, at least, well, yeah. that's it just one bike. I don't know yeah. if Wayne took it from our side and went where he fixed it. I don't know if he went that way. I didn't ask. Can I back up for a second? I had a question out there. Yeah. I've heard at least two people in this audience talk about surveys. And I task somebody with bringing in surveys or sending them to Brian so he can start putting something together we, that we can use as a visual. All right. Will you do that, Mr. Yeah. Dunkowski? 
Oh, planning should have access to them surveys from the planning board. Planning board had, had all, all that information when they approved the permit. Would you be willing to go dig that up? I don't know what that is. Board files? You could ask I can check the planning board files. Planning board files should have that. Which is probably an old road map, but that is well, probably a, that's probably a mess because it's yeah, all yeah. The road road map wouldn't be accurate enough all to the show where where the the place. where the drainage pipes were yeah. were running. Now, the, the other issue that it, it kind of relates to this is the environmental impact of water sitting on the side of the road for Thank days, you. and we have mosquito epidemics yep. in the area yep. of the county. People saying the drain water, don't collect water. And here we have a situation where yeah. water's sitting there. You don't have to convince us this is a problem. Yeah, he's he's the problem, problem. The problem is that. figuring so, out who's responsible know, for paying but for it. It's just not like eventually water will go away about yeah, we didn't, time period. Nobody no. has said yeah. that. Nobody has said eventually the water will go away, so you shouldn't worry about it. Right. No one has said yeah. that. Well, okay. Don't still a concern. But well, as, and, you know, yes, but as I said, and then seem to have agreement here. The question is, who is responsible for paying for the repairs? And that's what we need to figure out. No one, dis no one argues that repairs are needed for the system to get things draining again. Which is going to be hard because the town uses it. Like on our side, the town uses it to drain the water. And if it's busted on our side, well, then yeah, it should be the town. We're on this side, their side of the road. Well, I think it was originally built because the town wasn't bringing the water and the individual oh, the land thing. landowners decided we have to bring the water someplace well, so I, they built the system. Well, what I you built. yourself into hot water yeah. conjecturing there. Yeah, yeah you said, you know, <laughs> all the digits. Um, you're just be. guessing. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm guessing that it was the town never paid for anything oh, was, of this. When I was and that meant yeah, that the, there was water going into the property, and the land, the yeah, property yeah, owners decided yeah. they needed to drain it off. Possible, but we don't know. There's no other reason to build a drainage system. <laughs> so, in, in, a, in a typical situation where yeah. we have a a, a financial need, yeah. I mean, one of the yeah. first places yeah. to build is for rents, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think we'll reach out to uh, Natalie Lane and Paul Mark and have a conversation with them about what, if anything. Mm. State funds might be available. Well, you guys need to listen to yeah, this. Yeah, you, 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 you probably want to hear this. Fairly close. So, so, I mean, I think we should reach out to our representatives, Natalie Blay and Paul Mark, and I'm happy to reach out to them. I think everybody in here, if if, if we want to try to get some sort of state funding to pay for all or part of it, I feel, um, they I need feel to hear that it's a problem. It is. Um, I mean, Scott here, I, I try to, you know, then my property, farm property, prime farm property in the valley here for Scott to farm so you can put fruits and vegetables, you know, on your table at, you know, at the end of the day. Everybody eats salad and cucumbers and carrots and such, I'm sure. Okay. Which I think yeah. that after this year, Brian, I'm with a friend in Adelaide and I sent her pictures because yeah. the whole flood in the thing. So she's seen that field. I had coin on it. Oh, so she's seen what the field looks right. like. So I think that's a good opportunity to yeah. reach out to her. And there might be something out there that as I said, you, it helps. You, you've got no argument from us that it's a, that it's a problem. Gonna gonna pay. It's, it's not what it always comes down to. Yeah, and that's yeah. why this has been an issue for 100 years. Right, so. exactly. So we'll work with we'll people. Happy to work with you, and, you know, as we can and try to figure out the responsibilities and obligations on both sides and we appreciate you try to work to a solution and i think at the end of the day uh, it, it feels to me like figuring out you know who put it in in mm -hmm. that's that's the short-term answer right is mm -hmm. to but it doesn't really solve the long-term issue of it's 90 to 100 something year old pipe that right. that needs to come yeah. out and it's a problem today whether that system's there or not you know, we yeah. think we need to find a. We need to find and, a. And we and possibly not root it through somebody's driveway and front yard. That you know, so that yeah. would probably be appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. But and but even with that, we we'll come back to the same problem: who is responsible for for dealing with that issue? Yeah, and uh, and it, we, and well, if everybody kind of mm -hmm. points to somebody else and says, "Oh, you're supposed to right. take care of it." Then it's never going to get taken care of. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and we will work to try to figure that out. Right. That's what's been happening for 
many, many, many years like that. Oh, yeah. At this point, right. finger, and now you get more houses, you're getting everything more and more. And we we recognize it's a problem. Now we just have to figure out how to go about solving it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments on this? No, most of what to see in the map. No. Okay. Well, no. Such as next is. order of business: yeah. discuss a letter to the Cannabis Control Commission regarding the proposed draft revisions to the cannabis regulation. Brian. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I had the pleasure of reading through the draft regulations. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this control. Hey, you, know, you get paid for doing They that. use track changes. So, they use track changes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, there's this um, memorandum that I prepared for the board. Yeah. Um, and I won't go into uh, too many details, but I'll just summarize. Um, really, they were. Yeah. The, so this was the. Let me just back up for a second. There were really two issues that 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 compelled the legislature to um, adopt the law in 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was to address uh, issues surrounding host community agreements and also about uh, equity issues in the cannabis yeah. marketplace. Um, and so I'll just summarize those real quick. Real quickly, the, the issues with the host community agreements, a lot of them revolved around the community impact fee that created a lot of uh, a lot of conflict between mm -hmm. host communities and uh, applicants who were trying to open cannabis businesses. Um, and I think we heard horror stories about, you know, people being legitimate, what you could consider you know, ethics law violations. There was one there from some city who got arrested for, mm -hmm. you know, doing bad stuff that was already against the law. Uh, essentially, like, getting bribes to right. give out well, these host right. community Because they, they limited, uh, right. oh, there was a limited amount of host community that. agreements, and then there was bribes happening, and it was in the southeastern part of the state. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when that happened in Western. And uh, all the way to communities who were doing everything that they could in doing it the right way. And so it, it really ran the spectrum. The the illegal part of it, I would like to think that it was the uh, the very, very, very rare exception. Um, but it was it was portrayed as that every community was gouging every cannabis applicant. By right? in my opinion, that's how the industry portrayed it. Yeah. Um yeah. So this was a reaction to that, in my opinion. Um, and then, um, so I'll, I'll just stand those community agreements for a second. So they really went after the community impact fee. One of the questions that was outstanding was, what authority does the Cannabis Control Commission have over um, host community agreements? The, the original legislation was not clear. And the, host, and the uh, Cannabis Control Commission asked the legislature to make it clear that they had authority to uh, mm -hmm. review and accept or reject host community agreements. And that's what the legislature did here. Um, they clarified that, um, you know, community, it laid a framework for how municipalities would seek to be reimbursed for their community impacts. Um, you know, it's essentially like an invoice process now. The uh, host communities need to submit detailed invoices to the Cannabis Control Commission who reviews them to make sure that they're, um, appropriate or whatever we want to talk about that's another issue mm -hmm. you know, how the cannabis control commission would do that or what even uh reimbursable community impact is which we still don't know draft regulations don't address mm -hmm. but, um so they tried to so, so they, they they set up the framework for, for how many spouses would try to get reimbursed they, they didn't explain again what and this is a, a, a mm -hmm. little shortcoming of it what is a reimbursable community impact so host communities and cannabis applicants will come to the table again and nobody will have any idea any better than what, what we did before um yeah. now now as this plays out over years and lawsuits maybe um we're going to be able to look and say oh the the cannabis control commission approved uh, this type of impact for 
city of whatever it was, mm-hmm. city of Northampton, and, and they allowed that to happen. So there's probably a pretty good indication that that's something that so was, like the way could have yeah. yeah, you you really have to play it out because they didn't take any steps to. Um, and and that also doesn't address, address these. The, the, we think it's comparable to some other municipality. But the Cannabis Control Commission says, no, there's a difference here. Right. Yeah. What, what's our recourse to, you know, we have to sue them, go to court to sue them? Yeah, to, yeah essentially. To, to get whatever that money back, yeah. which would cost us more than the money we're applying for. Yeah. And I, and I like the idea. Um, and the regulations make clear um, it needs to be itemized community impacts. It still can't exceed 3% of gross sales, but we can't ask for a straight 3%. Um, that's the limit on it. Um, we can't ask for charitable donations or, you know, in-kind donations, those types of things. That's explicitly outlawed in the, in the draft regulations. Um, so I'll, I'll just finish up sort of my, my recommendations on, on, on this part. I, I think we should take a look at, once the regulations are approved, I think we should take a look at and, and proactively revise our post-community agreements as 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 they need to be. Um, I would recommend that we keep language in there about the impact fee because I think years from now we're gonna know better what's you know what's allowed and what's not. Yeah. And there may be a possibility to collect it at that point. Um, so we include language but we don't actually collect it. Right. Which is That's, suggesting? Yeah, yeah, yeah until okay. it, until it's clear. Um, yeah. that would be my recommendation. There's um, just a lot of manpower involved in just compiling the, the documenting yeah, right, yeah. whatever that we don't have to have the staff we're gonna get buried to do the that work. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, for whatever the relatively minimal return is. So that's yeah, that would be my recommendation. Uh, the and this was one of the big things that the, the Mass Municipal Association focused on was that um the Cannabis Control Commission is claiming that it has authority to retroactively um nullify or or, or not accept post community agreements that were previously entered into between municipalities um, and the applicants. So each license renewal, the Cannabis Control Commission said they're going to check to make sure that the HCA is compliant with the current draft regulation. So an HCA that was entered into three years ago between the municipality and the applicant, they're going to review. And that's that whole argument about, well, it's it's a it's violating the contracts clause of of the, the constitution because it's interfering with contracts between two private parties. That's the mass municipal association argument. Mm-hmm. Um, whether whether that's right or not, it's gonna if they if the campus control commission seeks to do that retroactive review, it's gonna it's gonna make some attorneys rich, let's put it that way, because I think there's gonna be I think that mm-hmm. that's a lawsuit that's headed in court. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's Probably the path that 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 we should take is we should allow the draft regulations to go through the process. I have some um, I put some comments in, in the letter um, mm-hmm. related to this uncertainty that still exists. Yeah, with, with yeah. community impacts and, and it's not very helpful. Um, the other part that I I don't like I probably like this I, I like this part the least is that the cannabis control. Commission is a certain authority to fine municipalities up to fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars per violation, which meant the violation is per day, right? So fines would accrue quickly. It is it's a subtle change, but it's an important change, I think, mm-hmm. that that the NMA should be more focused on. And that's prior to there's a difference between the, the Cannabis Control Commission. For the purposes of their licensing process, to say, I don't accept your host community agreement. It's not. It's not appropriate. So the remedy there is either fix it, or the applicant doesn't get their license in your town. As opposed to, as opposed to the cannabis control commission asserting authority over the municipalities to say, you're not doing this right. We're going to find you. Mm-hmm. Right. One of those is. In, in administrative process where we don't canvas uh, establishment can't open. The other one is you're not doing this right. We're going to find you. We're going to find you fifteen thousand dollars a day 
for not complying with our regulations. To me, that's a that's a huge change. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a huge change in in, in the relationship between the Cannabis Control Commission and municipalities, um, where it's you know it's it's uh, mm -hmm. they're 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 asserting authority over, in, in in ways that I don't think yeah. they can or should. Um, also, the same with in, they also assert similar authority. As, as it relates to equity standards, whether oh, yeah. it's not equity standards, they can be fined up to um, a year's worth of the community yeah. impact fees that the municipality was collecting. Um, in our case, it would be zero, but uh, <laughs> but it's still, they're asserting authority to right. essentially find the municipality to take money that yeah. comes from the municipality. Yeah, or, do, do, I was under understanding that Canvas Control Commission's Jurisdiction is over the establishments. Then that was original. Original, but original over the establishment, not over the municipalities. Correct. Now they're asserting authority over the municipalities, which I think is an overstep mm -hmm. of, of their. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're purpose. making it not worth our yeah. while necessarily. To well, they're, <clears throat> uh, they're holding a sword over our heads. If we don't do yeah. something right, and we may not even know what that something is until, yeah. Yeah, right. making until it it's too late. late. Yeah. We're going to bankrupt yeah. if you don't do it. And just right. to, just to touch base on the equity standards, which is the second part of the, the law yeah. and the regulation. Mm -hmm. So there was, and we and we saw it here. Uh, this uh, way, we the select board has entered into a, I think eleven post community agreements, mm -hmm. and there were two things in common that I saw that that that. The ones who didn't make it, mm -hmm. it was it was a lack of knowledge or training mm -hmm. about really the business or, or how to get through the permitting process, yeah. and the other one was a lack of access uh, to money, the yeah. capital. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the the select board, I, I thought it was great, gave out a host community agreement to anybody who had every single had a plan that was. That would protect, the, you know, that would operate yeah. their business and protect the public safety, health, and welfare. There was one issue right. with the the location, the sighting of one, and that got right. resolved. And, um, yeah. But that's the real issue. It's 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 the lack of training. It's the lack of knowledge, which hopefully the CCC is is helping to close that gap. They have some, you know, they have the social equity training program that, that they talk about. So, so yeah. but the biggest thing is the access to capital. It is really expensive. Yeah, they made it really to open expensive. these establishments, and you don't modify the look, modifying the local approval process, or asking the town to post the name of the point of board chairperson and their meeting schedule on the website doesn't doesn't address that. Mm -hmm. It address. doesn't even begin to address it. Because our planning board um, chair, as we know, does not have the money. That's true. To invest in uh, cannabis. So, and it doesn't address hundreds of years of capital right. accruing in right. certain people's hands and it is, others. Uh, it is a, it is, don't call me Chris, <laughs> it is a feel good piece of legislation that has yeah. very little practical yeah. benefit. That's, that's, that's my name. Yeah. And it's going to, but from their point of view, the overstep part where now they have power over municipalities. Uh, that that's that's the thing they like. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure they like that. And I'm sure they want that. But. It's going to increase our administrative burden if we elect to stay a host community. Um, you know, to put these things on our website and adopt these policies and social equity programs and goals. And too bad we can't take that out of a three percent impact <laughs> fee. Oh, you want to? Wouldn't that get me started right now? Right. <laughs> All right. I'm, I, uh, okay, it's twenty twenty ten. Right. You can keep it in two minutes. <laughs> this is this, so just quickly. This is the best part, of right? So there's there's a general so social equity. Let me just finish. So, so social equity standards. It's going to be an administrative burden. It's going to be a lighter administrative burden, and I think in the end, it's probably worth it. Um, we do have one establishment open now, and mm -hmm. you know we're going to start collect. We started collecting cannabis excise tax. Yeah, the state collects it, right? And then, then it gets the positive like, like you know, So there is a financial benefit to the town currently with a retailer. That that benefit it goes away when it's uh, a cultivator or manufacturer because there's no excise tax. Um because right. it happens at the point of sale. Um 
So there's one point in the regulations in this in social equity parts where it's actually it actually starts to address the issue, but I think they do it illegally. Um, they say that each community needs to in, each community needs to pay one percent of their community impact fee into the social equity fund, right? So I get it. We're trying to get more money into the social equity fund. The problem is that for years. The, the cannabis lobbyists and the law says that community impact fees need to be reasonably related to the impacts of that facility in your town. Mm -hmm. So they need to make the case that that they're entitled to the one percent that that this cannabis facility in Waitley is creating, you know, impacts. So they're essentially violating their own Main. principle. Main. Why like, isn't there yeah. a social equity yeah. tax on business? Rather than the local municipality. That would make more sense, but yeah. it, it, it seems they've shifted an awful lot from the establishments to the municipality. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as you know, I'm not a big fan. Um, I did yeah. put together that, um, yeah. that comment letter that, that tried to highlight it. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of you, you you did not tell them, hey, you are overstepping your back. That is not in here. That you really stuck to. Um, hey, these are like specific problems that are going to be things that we're going to have to deal with. First, them being addressing um, what is a recognizable and reimbursable community impact. Um, and uh, the second one seems to be about um, the process, how will that be determined? Um, the equity standards being not particularly relevant. Um, Although they they're sort of easy to comply with, if it's really just posting something on your website, um, the administrative burden is the problem. Um, and then I thought number four was pretty well written. So just this is a fundamental shift in the relationship, and I think that's understated, but really <laughs> hits the spot in a way. Yeah, you know, that that. Uh, we that that's how we see it, and uh, that uh, you're seeing, then the last one is to make a suggestion that you take an approach that's a little more reasonable, right? So, yeah, I think I am fine with sending this. I am I I think. happy to sign up. Yeah, oh, so we need to move and vote. We need yep. to I move that we send this letter post haste to the Andrews Control Committee. No, I second. All in favor, aye. Oops. Okay. You have a <laughs> I do. Are you delivering this to them electronically, or are we signing a hard copy? In person. Yeah. You're signing a hard copy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now we'll get to the quick items. We our RFP for the restoration of the center school. <laughs> so this. Um, just, just so this is a recap of, of, of where we are, we have we put together, we modified the the previous RFP, which is released for sale. Yeah. Um, and we requested uh, documents from town council, so we requested a purchase and sale agreement. Mm -hmm. we need, and uh, our right of first refusal document that we would need to talk about as to whether that, that's something that the town want. Um, to include, but we asked for that document. Anyways, um, to include. And the town council is also reviewing the preservation restriction that Mass Historic Commission has already reviewed. Um, once we get those documents back, um, then we can include them in the request for proposals. Mm -hmm. um, that document itself will be will be ready to go. Okay. Um, obviously, we can, you know, we can change whatever language we need to within the RFP, but the intent would be for uh, the sale of the building subject to the historic preservation restriction. Um, as it's currently written, there, there's no limitations on use other than what the zoning bylaw allows. Um, there's, you know, there's a preference towards. Uses that benefit the neighborhood and that mm -hmm. have little impact, little adverse impact on the neighborhood. Um, but other than that, there's no, you know, there's no real preference stated as to if we want this to be a 
retail store or a single family yeah. house or um, yeah. what have you. Um, so that's the approach that that's that's how it's currently written. Um, if it should be different than that, then that's a discussion that, that we should have. Um, and we're not obviously we're not seeking approval of this now, but right. that's sort of where we're at in the process. Okay. Yeah. Hey. This is you're still working this up for us right. to bring we'll some more details by we would have future date. Yeah. But no, nothing that's gonna happen between now and that future date is gonna change the fundamentals of right. this is a purchase, um, then restoration and what kinds of places we would like to have in there. Right. What could go there? Yeah. And right. the overall uh, I guess the overall sentiment that that, uh, that I'm going off of is that Obviously, it needs to be used that's appropriate for the neighborhood, but mm -hmm. really, the, the the high priority here is the preservation of the building itself and the mm -hmm. historic value that it has to the town. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and, and, the preservation restriction. And just as background, we have already sent out an RFP looking for lease. We got no interest, so we now are moving up to potential sale. Yeah, and this would still require. So the disposition of property still would require a town of control. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is just the draft request for proposals, not a contract, not anything. Right. And it's not even ready for approval yet. Okay. okay. Good. Next. Uh, so that would to review, discuss, and vote whether to approve the covenant agreement with Quan Quan Farms for the CPA Historic Silo Restoration Grant. So this was previously viewed by the board and approved, but their I attorney was say. I thought we yeah, their that. attorney had came back and asked for some changes. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and it essentially addressed. Uh, I mean, there were some minor things, but at the end of paragraph one, it talks about. Um, what happens to their obligation if the if the site was destroyed by like an act of God or sort of a natural disaster? Oh, do they yeah. still owe the money or not? You know. Oh, okay. Um, if so, if it's struck by lightning and burns down, do they have to pay us back? It, it talks about it. You know, if the insurance repairing or replacing the site would materially the office store significance of this insufficient insurance proceeds. Um, that the, their obligation to repay would, uh, wouldn't stand. So, Quan Quan just wanted to cover some things that we did that were overlooked. Right. Where, where is that noted under item number, under paragraph one now yeah. before the town of Quan Quan? Um, no, I don't see any additional language about acts of God or lightning or floods. Under it's the one titled Covenant for Compliance with U.S. Secretary of Interior Standards on right. the second page. Or did I send you an old one? You sent me. You must have just looked like it. doesn't say U.S. Yes, Department of Anything. Just Covenant for Masonry Historic. Yeah, just says so they this, shall we pay the town the full amount. If, well then. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, not sign this one. Yeah. Oops. Well, the good one's there. So. Here is it. What? <laughs> what portion? What? Um, Section we talking about so one that last paragraph. Section one. Uh, yeah, that's a lot longer than the paragraph. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is, isn't it? Oh, okay. You know what I think happened? There was track changes, and the track changes didn't print. Oh, I see. Okay, so here's the relevant part, and it seems to be added. If, during the 20-year period starting on the date of this agreement, the historic masonry silo is destroyed or significantly damaged by a fire or natural disaster, and Quan Quan Farm or its subsequent owner of the silo determines in its reasonable discretion that A, repairing or replacing the silo would materially and negatively alter its historic significance, or B, there are insufficient insurance funds to proceed. There are insufficient insurance proceeds to repair or replace the silo. Then this amended agreement shall terminate 30 days after written notice 
to the town and Quang Quang Farm or subsequent owner of silo shall not be responsible for any repayment of the award. So in its reason, like the subsequent owner or the Quang Quang Farm determines in its reasonable discretion. Hmm. So there's the, that's the that her term is probably the most uh, they, right? <laughs> right. But it's still only triggered by a natural and that's yes. 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 It shall be completed in a so way. It's not like at their discretion if it's not if right. it's falling down. Right. right. It's gotta be as a result. It's gotta be as a result of natural exist. Okay. I am fine with that revised. Yeah, I think we can probably live with it. I mean if like if it if it really burns down. Or get damaged up by our lady like, strength, and yep. you know okay. we right. both lose out. They're, they're putting right. they've got skin in the game here already. Yeah, right. So, so um, we sign that. Well, we need to. I think we have to. Ah, I move that we approve the covenant agreement with Quan Quan Farms for the CPA Historic Silo Restoration Grant. I second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I just found the track. Can you just watch? Oh, very good. Good timing. All right. Ah, let's get that sign. Okay. I'm going to do Christian Lane Brainage again. Uh, good enough the first time. No, it's, yeah. It was so uh, much fun the first time. Okay. <laughs> Review and discuss the 268 State Road Residential Development Study completed by the Town Consultant BHB. Not for that many guys either. So. I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. I just think I reviewed that online. I was pretty interested. I need to make myself a. I've got here. Ooh. And so, but just, we're at 7A. Seven seven eight, eight, right? We're at 7A. Yes. And just to let everyone know, this at the last meeting of the housing committee, I shared this with them since it became, mm -hmm. I'd gotten it like two weeks before. And, and what did they think of it? Thank you. They were thrilled with it. They didn't know it was in, in the process. Ah. And I told them, well, until we got the study back, we didn't know if there was any. It was just, you know, they could have come back and said, no, you can't. No, no housing available. Yeah, I didn't there. expect and that. And then they, they three separate uh, ideas of what could be done on that lot. Yeah. Uh, all right, so, so he's, you're, so, yeah, he's yeah. bringing up something that we don't have copies of. So. Yeah. 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 So I'll give a little background. Welcome back, Judy. Thank you. Um, so this would have been a year ago, probably. Um, the town participated in a uh, regional um, was complete neighborhoods housing grant application. Um, and it was with um, a couple other uh, municipalities in Franklin County. Um, and it was a, a grant of technical assistance, essentially, that MHP paid for Mass uh, Housing Partnership. Um, so they 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 paid a consultant BHB in this case to do um, an analysis of a of a piece of property, um, really like a yield analysis to see um, what could be done in terms of housing on that piece of property, um, so that the mile lot was selected. Um, and they did an existing conditions analysis. They did a wetlands uh, wetlands delineation for us, which is useful. Mm -hmm. um, so that piece of property critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, because it's pretty much surrounded by water. Right. Um, so, um, you know, there were a couple meetings with, uh, it was Hannah at the time, with BHB. Um, they did a site visit. They looked at zoning. Um, Judy highlighted that they missed a critical part of zoning. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what they... Um, came up with in terms of you know what could what they thought could be done. Um, so and in the end, um, they thought it was feasible. 
uh, for housing. Um, there's obviously some, some zoning issues. That but, sure does look like it would never fit. On yeah, that. I know. Right? Not, right? So that's not the, no, that's not what they're proposing for that. Well, so this is just is. a yield analysis, right? They were trying to, in theory, and again, they missed a critical component of the zoning and out of the zoning bylaw. But in theory, because um, there's a zoning bylaw says that there's additional dimensional requirements for each additional dwelling unit. So essentially, the lot has to be bigger. And, can get less units on it, but mm. they they missed that part. Unless we, unless that's in table twenty seven of the other document, <laughs> that you loosen that up so that you can have more units. So but this is actually showing twenty four units, twenty four residential units. When I saw this, and maybe a friend, it looks like a hundred. It yeah. looks like I almost fell out of my chair because I didn't. It's I like drive by there and I see the, the property. Um, and, and we see snowmobiles. Yeah, right. So right, in right. this case, uh, nobody can see my hands, so I can't do that. In this case, um, this, should, yeah, there so we, we don't have sewer and Whaley, so the septic is under the parking lot. Uh, there is town water here, um, yeah. so there's public water. Uh, the septic system is under the parking lot outside of any of the, the wetland buffers. Um, this is a raised uh, parking lot. You, you can't see it very well, but it's actually mm -hmm. four or five feet, I believe. Out of the uh, uh, this one's going to drain into the road instead yeah, of the yeah. other way around. Uh, but this is showing uh, 24 units as, as to something that could be possible there. Again, I, I, this is just max. You know, max, what can we do? Not necessarily what do we want to do. Can, can you clarify that parking lot being raised? It's, is it on pylons or something? Uh, no, the whole ground is raised. Oh, the three feet like, above grade. I was like, okay. I yeah. See. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They had to put the septic under there. Yeah. Can you really do that? Put septic under yeah. paving? Yeah. Wow. It's not easy, but you can. Uh, that's what it is at the castaways. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. So that was that was sort of the biggest monstrosity yeah. a negative word, but. That's right. that's the right, and it, I sort of feel like I, I'm not sure that those trees and stuff that doesn't really describe what's around it very well. I don't think. Is yeah. it really just all trees? Yeah, I it, thought it, the it, water it, was it, really, it really is all it's all trees to the cleared area. To yeah. The, okay, yeah, um, so the water is going to be on that. Okay, yeah, the uh, the wetlands is behind. Yeah, those the, the two buildings. There's a, uh, the Great Swamp Brook runs back through here. Yeah, and okay. then there's sort of a, a seasonal or intermittent stream that passes through a culvert. Okay, onto this side of the property. Oh, okay, all right. Um, so then they they scaled it back. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, this is just I, I should have shown you this different one. views. Of um, yeah, there, there we go. go. This is the Great Swamp Brook. Uh huh. Um, but then there's also a, a intermittent stream that runs along this part of the property. So in the light blue, you're allowed to build the buildings on the wetland. You just can't have the septic on the wetlands. That seem like the houses are on the wetlands. Yes, it sure does. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you can you can't build within the wetland. You you can't build. You need a you need a a special approval from the CONCON, and they're meeting tomorrow night about this. Okay. Huh. Is this one of those things where if you build on a wetland, you have to? create an equivalent amount of a wetland somewhere else? Um, it, it depends on how far there, there's different. So mm -hmm. it, so this is a it brook, so it's riverfront protection area, I believe. There's a 100 to 200 feet mm -hmm. foot buffer. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different requirements. Uh, definitely, if there's direct impact on a mm -hmm. wetland, then, you do, then there's a uh, replication requirement. Yeah. And, and our, our conservation commissioner does not believe that these uh, Newly constructed wetlands work very well. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Right. Yeah. Huh. I mean, just just. Anyway, looking, there's a lot in, more here. I shouldn't have interrupted. Right. I apologize. No, it's great. And we and, and we had people in here talking about drainage. It just seemed like building in the wetlands. Does that really seem like a good idea? It's building right. the belt buffer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> Um, this is the second concept. So, so well, I mean, what came out of this was this final memorandum with with these concept plans, right? Huh. Um, it was. It's not a. It's. It was just sort of. Here's what you can do. Um, yeah. Okay. It, they're not intended nobody, to be architectural. Plans. Right. Nobody's right. saying this is what we're going to do or this is what we yeah. should do. It's just. And nobody's going to say you should move right. that boundary over here. No. Right. Right. 
So this is um, 12 units, um, a building in the front, parking in the back. Um, you see the raised mm -hmm. septic is over here, it's mounted uh -huh. over here, yeah. um, but it, it's closer to the road. Um, okay. So and there's just, you know, there's obviously more green space now because the septic, uh, because you have a yeah, building, right? Yeah, and not this many parking places to play. Right. Um, let's see what the specifics of that. So that a single multiplex. Um, you know, they're focusing on the, uh -huh. the and that's twelve unit side, not the twenty four. Yeah, the half as many units. And, um, and when they say unit here, they're talking about a a one bedroom apartment, a two bedroom apartment. Do they happen to they specify in any way, or I, just it's a vague unit? I asked that question. Um, but I don't remember the answer. I don't remember the answer. <laughs> yeah, because like what like what the unit is is actually kind of important, right. yeah. I think, right? Because you know, a family yeah. with children is not gonna really live in a one bedroom apartment. Right. right. And um I don't remember even seeing them specifying you know, the square footage per unit. Uh -huh. No, they it's a very um Brian and, described it to me as a tabletop analysis mm -hmm. it's it's quite superficial yeah. i mean they missed the zoning requirements which actually in waitley limit it to seven units um i have no idea they're they're sort of idly showing a space for septic um knowing how much space a, a single family septic takes up up i have no idea whether they've actually talked to engineers about the amount of space that might be required for a 12 or 24 units Oh, I think there's a lot. You, I think you take all of this with. This is nice. Let's let's look at. This one. Okay. What, Judy, what? If, if these could be built as affordable units, would some of these requirements go away? Oh yeah. Um, well, they don't have to be affordable. They could be. They could be affordable. They could be senior. Um. Yeah. I actually, I think they need to be affordable. Yeah, forty B. They would go away. It would not take away the environmental constraints. Mm -hmm. It would take away our local spatial zoning requ requirements about about housing, but all of yeah. the environmental and health law constraints yeah, would still apply. So, so things but like the I, I think the other idea would be if we were to do something like this, it would be in conjunction with the housing plan. And to try to get affordable units, yeah, if we could. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And then and you you go about think seven. about it. This is not a place for a family unit because it's cut off from anything. There's not enough playground area. It's it's a it might mm -hmm. be a nice a nice senior housing place. But yeah, you're talking of a state override of our local zoning to do it. And you don't need the sticks that can go across the street. Mm -hmm. And it's on a bus. I mean, you can probably get yeah. further to stop there. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, I think transportation is not a problem. Um, so wetlands, but that's. I'm sorry, I'm being facetious. Wetland buffer refers to the sort of lighter aqua, and wetland is the darker. So there's. Or what so, so there's two things going on here. One is riverfront protection area, yep. and then one is, I believe, uh, bordering vegetated wetlands. So there's two different types of wetlands that exist. And there's here. a 200 foot. I think it delineates them further on, but I'm I'm not remembering very well. There's a oh, 200 foot buffer and a 100 foot buffer. Up here, yeah, that's a 200 river, right? Yeah, yeah. 200 river okay. buffer. Yeah, uh, I think so. a 100 is probably. Um, about halfway between there and the river. I think if you scroll down about five, six, well, anyway, continue your narrative. I apologize for interrupting. Yeah, this wetland buffer is a different set of uh -huh. regulations. Cause, yeah. Cause right. So when it says wetland there, is that applying to the color to the left of the word wetland or the color? I think I think right? it's wetland to the to the right towards the river is just off wetlands. Okay. But wetland is something that is to the left, left of that is, is okay. and some kind of building is possible. It, it, right, is it, possible with permits, with so with exceptions from the con conservation. Right, time. but to to the right, the dark the mm -hmm. darker aqua is just out of bounds. 
And then, and, and that, you see, the, the property extends all the way back to the straight line. So it's it's on both sides of that river. The river runs through the property. It's not the back border line. But we have run through it. Yes. Yeah, so so it's just uh, that, that, but that's just <laughs> to clarify, that's not the boundary of the property. That's just the boundary. Yeah. Yep. Understood. The river. Yeah. Um, and this is the last concept. There's, there's Judy's playground in the back there. <laughs> um, so this is more townhome style. Yeah. Um, it's like six units. It looks awful. Layout. Um, six ish. Six, maybe. maybe no, that's, no, that's 12 units. 12 units. Okay. So 12 townhomes arranged in four buildings. Somehow, however that works. Uh, oh, yeah. One of them, one, the big ones have four units each. Right. Four garage. They have four garage doors each. What would that like? So in this arrangement, I set the system book at the front of the site. Um, so kind of underneath those trees. Yeah, yeah under yeah. that grassy area. Oh, yeah, that was in the middle of the border shoots. Oh, yeah, I can see a map in now. Um, yeah. Garages, um, you know, townhome style. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that might be a little bit more um, what the, you know, yeah. it's a little bit more of, of I think what Whitley is. Mm -hmm. Um and we wouldn't have to replicate what the look was. As yeah. I mean, so this is garage, so garage parking. Um yeah. and obviously if we don't think about well, I don't when I'm looking at those concepts, but I think about how many people would have to shovel off their car and you know, outside, mm -hmm. not have yeah, garage yeah, and, and by, by, I guess we're spoiled, but um, if we're thinking about, if we're thinking about age restricted housing or senior housing, that might be something to consider. But, yeah. you know, I, I think the people who, I know, I know I appreciate having a garage, so I could imagine if my mm -hmm. abilities are more limited to have to All right. push off a foot and a half mm -hmm. of snow would be kind of difficult. Yeah, so. but townhomes also, they have a, Old elderly housing that's often you know, trying to keep yeah. it to one floor. Yep. Right. And that's so, the other thing, right? It would be one, it would be one level townhomes with, with garages. So oh, because the oh the pitch I guess I shouldn't read so much into the picture because it really looks like a two level. Well, no, no, they, are, they are two level. They are two level. I, I agree with you. I think that if it was yeah. age you know, age age restricted housing, then you shouldn't. Right, then you wouldn't put the old you twelve. Be, right. You'd put six on there. Some of us can still do stairs. Right. For now. For now. Yes. <laughs> we all get to a point where we can. Yep. So, I mean, that was that was work that right. the, the consultant had done on our behalf. For me, it, it really opened my eyes to, I, I mean, I, I had a pretty low expectation that all work be done. I'm mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, well, in my mind, though, I cut all the numbers in half. In dwelling units? Dwelling units, yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. I think they're very <laughs> optimistic about that. Um, well, the, the problem with that is if you get into fewer dwelling units, you're less likely to find a developer who's going to find it economically feasible. Right, but it'd be... It'd, it'd, it'd take I'd, away I'd, the cost of the land, it's easy. Yeah. And I, I would really say that the planning building. board would much prefer that this land stay commercially zoned and for commercial use. And I think there are several ways you can allow housing still on this site. One is to take whatever the purchase price a developer would pay for commercial and donate it to the Affordable Housing Trust or the CPC. CPA housing. Another is to take the difference in what the property tax might earn on a commercial property and what it might earn on as a residential and annually contribute that to, to one of the housing funds. But Waitley has so, so few commercial properties left. And yeah. this, this is the only, I mean, it's town owned, so it's it's easy meat for for a housing analysis. It's it's on Route Five, so it's it's got transportation, but it's 
in and of itself not an attractive location for for living. It might be more attractive for commercial. It's obviously a limited site, so I shouldn't imply that commercial people will be. Well, uh, we, we've had it out there, and, and since uh, geez, the first term I was elected to the select board, we've been trying to find a business that's interested in this property. When it was for sale, it was zoned as an agricultural residential property, not as a commercial property. And that's a huge difference. And then there was the 2008 financial crisis. So I don't think we have, I mean, I have no idea what this would bring, but. We, yeah, we, there, we hung out there though, and it was, it was all post 2008 because that's when I was elected, um, 2009. So it was all in that time. Yeah, but it was still never, some ag, ag residential. I mean, it wasn't its own commercial then, and who's going to buy we, it on the speculation that it might might the, eventually be zoned commercial? Nobody. When, when, did this, when did the commercial zoning happen? I should look it up, but I would say maybe 2016 or so. And I think it's been on the market since 2018. I don't think anybody has actively tried to sell it since it was rezoned. Brian, you've had a couple of inquiries on it at some point. Um, uh, I've had one or two phone calls yeah. over the time that I've been here, I think. So that's seven years, six years. Yeah. Um, one was for George Mitchell. Maybe, and the other one was, might have been some. Yeah. Use similar to what built uses across the street, I think. Mm. Mm. But nothing, uh, nobody ever pursued it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess you, you I, I, I hear what you're saying about it's not desirable for housing, but if you need a place to live and you need transportation and you work in Greenfield or Northampton, you have a bus every two hours going both ways. Um, which is not great, but it's better than nothing. And there's, you'd have neighbors, right? You'd have a, you'd have a cluster of six to 12 other people or units. Well, assuming, I mean, there's several assumptions there, Joyce. One is that you get the wetlands exemptions. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, yes, I understand I'm making all those assumptions, but I'm just, I, I'm just saying, I, I want to still keep housing on the table, and I understand. The oh, I understand that, about. but I just wanted to make, make it clear, the, how, one of the recommendations in the housing pr production plan that you approved yeah. earlier was to have mixed-use residential housing up around exit 35. Where and, there is also transportation and parking and amenities. And there are many areas in town that that might conceivably be developed and nobody thinks about them. And yeah. I guess yeah, I'm a little concerned that the, you, the I, easy I way that, for I, the housing committee is to just look at town owned land when there isn't much of it and it's not necessarily such a great deal. Yeah. Um, I asked about that, and they considered mixed use and rejected there wasn't enough. Hmm. Uh, they were set, they were set, the VHB or whoever. The, 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 oh, for this, for, this location. for this location. Um, yeah, well, this it and, doesn't and, make any sense. It mixed not, use that oh. there wouldn't be a developer. Oh, okay. Who, now, mixed People. use needs to be a larger zoning area. It's right. not. It's not a single lot kind of concept. Oh, it's okay. something you take for a, a district and you you apply it to a larger larger area and has things like design standards, has residential up above commercial, but you wouldn't you wouldn't ever. I don't think. I I don't think it would ever be feasible for us a single lot. The the other or at least uses, a single lot of this size. The other use is at least under potent contemplation is for the town highway garage on that yeah. location that 
So we have to look and see, is that viable? And if we see that's viable, then we've got to start deciding, you know, coming with a process to figure out how, what we want, what direction right. we want to go in mm-hmm. yeah, for this project, because you can't, right. you can't pursue housing and commercial and highway garage oh. at the same time. Yeah. I'll be really interested to hear what the Conservation Commission has to say. I I get yeah. really nervous about con- even considering building near wetlands, much less on them. And I think it's asking for trouble, actually, in the future. So, But I'll be very interested to hear what the Conservation Commission has to say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's 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 it. Report. Next, to discuss a request from Waitley Elementary School to use CLFRF monies to repair the emergency generator. We have an estimate for $4,561.60 for repair to the generator. Uh, my view is I don't want to be using CLFRF money for maintenance. I'd like to try to find some other source for that money. Uh, is CLF art money is can be used for anything. And I just don't it's probably yeah. not worth asking why does it need to be repaired? It's never really been used. Uh it, it does not seem to be an urgent but it, it needs it's not to work. work. It doesn't work, but does it never work? It, it has worked. Work. Um and this so this controller failed. Oh they don't know if it it happened from a power surge or a lightning um, strike or a power surge. It just didn't turn on. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my inclination would be to put this on agenda for a special town meeting, take that in free cash, and mm-hmm. do it that way. It, it's quicker and easier to have us approve right. for F money, but yeah. I don't. I, don't I, I see that as, as a capital fund, not a maintenance fund. Are they going to be in trouble if the school year has started and it goes out and the generator doesn't kick in? They just won't have power. No, that's fine. That's all. Awesome. I mean, well, that's sort of been the case for most of this life. Right. 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 Okay. They haven't had a generator. They haven't had a that's generator. Yeah. Yeah. So as it, it's, I, not, I, it's not, it's not urgent, and I just it's, don't like using that money. Right. It's, yeah. If it were more urgent, that might make more sense, but. Um, I can yeah. agree with that. Okay, so okay. I suppose we will not do that. Uh, next, we have we have to project assessment. Electric yeah, electric know. vehicle fleet assessment. <laughs> All right, Sylvie's so turn. Yeah. Um, so yes, we have here for you a proposal um, from Weston and Sampson uh, to conduct our electric vehicle fleet assessment. Um, this is something, a project that got underway some time ago. Um, mm-hmm. Brian and my predecessor, Hannah, um, acquired funding to do this um, evaluation. And so um, we uh, have been in conversation with Weston and Samson, um, and I spoke to them recently to go over this proposal. Um, and uh, we would like to move forward with it. Um, they will be focusing on light and medium duty vehicles, um, but since our fleet is relatively small, I did ask that they include some high level assessment of all of our vehicles, including the heavy duty ones that while there may not necessarily be a logical um, transition um, for us now with those vehicles, we will get a sense for our fleet, how to move our fleet, um, mm-hmm. what might be small primitives for the future, and just to get a sense of what's on the market. Um, so they were happy to incorporate that. Um, and I had also had some uh, conversations about um, just sort of the feasibility of, um, as we're considering electric vehicles, um, to be aware that we do have uh, vehicles in our fleet that need to be on the road consistently for long durations of time and to make special consideration of that. Um, and so I spoke with John uh, Perla from um Rivermore, which is the subcontractor, um, and uh, you know, um, talk to them about those concerns, and um, they're happy to uh, to look at all that with us. Um, so they are um, 
familiar with the area. Um, I think John is based um, out east, but we do have a project manager who is Western Mass uh, located. So uh, they're very familiar with this area and they have done a lot of this work already and with um, towns uh, throughout New England. Um, and um, the project manager worked for the city of Northampton. Um, and uh, so I feel comfortable uh, working with them on this project. They've been very um, amenable to our, our particular needs. Um, so with your, um, your acceptance school, we would like to work with them and uh, conduct this assessment. I, I, I wasn't listening to the beginning of your presentation. Is there, do we have a grant? We've got a new school. Oh, yes. Technical assistant grant to cover. Yes, all the, this all the uh, expenses yeah. are, are. Yeah, the costs are covered. Yeah. Just yeah. making well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Seems good. Um, I move that we move forward on this proposal. On second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, bike maintenance yeah. station installation. So, circling back to this, um, we talked a little bit about it last time. Um, and um, after the last uh, board meeting when we discussed this, um, I did talk with Jim Kirkendall, who mm -hmm. um, yeah. is a member of the Finance Committee and also an experienced cyclist, and um, he reached out to us and, uh, um, you know, helped to uh, affirm the, the, the usefulness of three of the locations that we had been talking about in particular, the West Waitley, um, the Waitley Library, and the Hurley Park locations. Um, uh, his uh, insight was very helpful just um, to uh, you know, validate our, our, uh, our locations there for their usefulness for the majority of cyclists. Um, and then we would also like to, since we have the, the funds through this grant, uh, the Sheriff Streets grant, we would like to uh, put a, a maintenance station outside the office here. We do observe a lot of cyclists coming um, yeah. down our road, and uh, we just feel that it would be nice to have that amenity available to people. Yeah. And um, I think people from the office should be they can ride their bikes. There you go. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, so, uh, we have space and uh, we have yeah. uh, grant money available. Um, yeah. And uh, the uh, we will also have money um, to purchase uh, replacement parts um, should any of these units fail in, in you know, the ensuing years. But I wouldn't anticipate that happening for three or five years down the road, but it will be nice that we can have backups available. Um, and then we will have money as well to reimburse our highway department um, just for the sauna tubing and um, concrete expenses. Um, so uh, no, sounds good. It, what, where, where exactly would the West Waitley site be? That is on, um, so the, the, it's at an intersection, the Conway and Poplar Hill Road. Um, there, down below, there's an area of the fire hydrant, and then up above, there's a grassy hill area. Um, and I spoke with Keith, and he said the upper um, area would be preferable. Um, so that, um, that's town owned land? Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Um, or is it just in the town layout? Um, I'm not sure. I know the. Oh, I think it's layout. I think it's. It's in the so uh, the layout would be like there's a road and then there's like people's houses and stuff. Where does the town's property end? That's who you call that layout, and that's usually it's wider than the road is. It's not just the road isn't the boundary of where the town is. It's like you know, some number of feet on either side. It's not uniform anywhere. So I'm um, like. For, to me, I'm looking at this. I feel like this is going to be in Paul Newland's front yard. Yeah. Is that, yeah, that about right? That's what I. It's, that's why I'm trying to pin, yeah. pin down exactly. Right. You know which side. So sort of going to be because uh, where where Poplar Hill and Conway Road yeah. meet, there um, is sort of a triangle yeah. full of poison ivy. Don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, like just north of that is uphill of that is. Paul where, where Paul lives, and so yeah, I think they would be good custodians. Okay. Well, um, I haven't gone out to that location with Keith to discuss the placement, but I yeah. did go out there, and I was assuming probably the poison ivy patch is the area that I thought that he was referring to, um, um, which I think would be in the town's. Uh, that would definitely be in the town's layout. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's where I had um, thought we were talking about, but um, I can. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to, want to clarify exactly the other places. It's all 
town property and the placement is wherever we want it. Okay. There's there's less town property in the West Wakeley area, so we need to right. be sure where exactly where the placement is. Yeah. Okay. Um, we will make sure it's not property. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll make it downtown property or if say you want it to be at West Wakeley Chapel. That the chapel make, would be the other logical make location. an agreement with, yeah. with the church. To, there. At the time yeah. that this was sort of being formulated yeah. and the update uh, were that Hannah was applying for the grant, yeah. um, I think that they were unable to get a letter of support from the chapel um, at that time. I, yeah. I think it was just probably a matter of timing, not necessarily yeah. um, resistance to the idea. But yeah. um, so for that reason, uh, they had moved the, that particular location just to that public yeah. area of the intersection. So yeah. okay, yeah, I just. I think we need to clarify exactly where it's going to, where that location is going to be. Yeah, I can certainly uh, yeah. Um, get back to you all with um, uh, a more specific spot there. Otherwise, and, it seems great. Yeah. Um, great. And, and, and does this so require this any action from vote? us today? Yeah, um, we already voted on this. So we have to go ahead. Yeah. All right. Do you want us to vote again? I, you good? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you were just gonna, you're just coming back to, to with a couple of details. We already voted. Yeah. Us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then just lastly, I think I wanted to mention that we are still looking for members for um the uh, steering group for the master plan and digital equity um uh, project. Uh, so. I had sent out, um, well, I made a post on the website, so anybody uh, listening online, uh, you can check the, the new section of uh, the Whitley uh, website. Um, and I had um, gotten this information out to the different uh, committees, um, so hopefully people might still be thinking about it. But we are looking to uh, hopefully start with the master plan steering group um, coming in September, and then it would be a project that would be going from this September through to March 2024. Um, it's not a it's not a massive time commitment. I think we're looking to have uh, people meeting four to five times throughout that period, and um, uh, we have flexibility whether we want to do that online or in person, what have you, um, and decisions can be made by email. So um, hopefully that flexibility um, will mean that more people will be interested in joining the process. Um, but we we want to organize this committee to guide the master planning visioning process, which will happen with more members of the town and, and will inform our master plan and uh, the types of things that we want to focus on for our master plan moving forward. <laughs> um, and uh, there will also be a component uh, like we're doing a, a digital equity survey. And so the, the steering group will help to draft and uh, distribute that survey, but it won't require additional meetings. So mm. um, if you're interested or if you um, know other people who might be interested, please send them our way. Mm. Um, you can stop by their office here or um, you can email me at communitydevelopment at weekly.org. Um, however, you want to get in touch, but we are hoping to get more people involved and ready to do that with us. Mm. Okay, I think it would be really ironic if somebody stepped forward as a result of an article in the scoop whose deadline is tomorrow. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> really ironic if the printed and mailed thing got you somebody for digital, but you, or, or an article in the recorder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I get the E quarter. <laughs> Less ironic. Okay, thank you, Sylvie. Next, uh, we have an appointment, a nomination to library trustee of Deborah Carney. I would nominate them to uh, vote that we, uh, sorry, I, uh, I, I move that we appoint Deborah Carney to the library trustee. Second. She's awesome. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 To review and approve special municipal employee status for Larry Kuttner, uh, as it was represented to the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. Yeah, so, so this makes my head hurt. No. <laughs> um, because I don't really think that, I, I'm not certain that it doesn't hurt to do this, but I'm not really certain that we need to do this for yeah. Larry. Larry also, Agrees that he probably doesn't do it. Right. Um, it there's a, a there's a provision in, in mass general law that says if if 
if you're if you're if you're appointed to two different positions and one of them is paid, um, there's there's conflict of interest issues. Okay. Or that that could arise, right? Um, and so what they're saying here in in his letter and in, in this uh, this disclosure here um, is that um, and that so so he's on the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, which has a financial contract with the town, oh. right? But he also serves in a role with the town lately. Um, so in theory. His his role on the trans uh, the solid waste committee, the town the solid town waste. solid waste committee, which contracts with the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District, of which he's our representative and on the board. Mm -hmm. uh, those positions could, in theory, conflict. Right, his obligations to the solid waste management district could be different or oppose those that exist for the town of Wheaton. Let's say a uh, simple would be, hey, we're going to vote to raise all everybody's. Whatever assessment by twenty thousand. Well, that's you know his role. Right. He's got a role. His decision. Factors. He's got a role in those. Those can conflict because Whaley doesn't want to pay an extra twenty thousand dollars. Right. The contract. Yeah. For the yeah. That's sure. Um. So there's that disclosure. Um. I, I don't really see it as as he's having a financial interest. In the municipal contract, like, it's not just like personal, he personally doesn't have. He that personally doesn't interest. have a, a conflict, um, but right, but he, his two positions, he participates in an organization and right. control has partial control of that organization. That has. Yeah. So, uh, um, I know this is this is, this goes back two years with discussions with the district, and remember what this came up last in, in the whether he needed to be the position needed to be a special. You know, we had to, we had to mm -hmm. designate. That position as a special uh, municipal employee. Um, which, which of those does he get paid for? No, that's the see that's so, so, so neither of these is a paid position. No, and that's it's awesome. just that oh it's just that mm -hmm. they might make financial decisions that are so that's that's one of these like the, the disclosure like I, I I get it that makes sense to me but the one where it's well one of your positions is paid and the other ones. Nah, with, with, your point with, is, without going right. further into this, do I have a motion to approve? I have a second. Or, a second. A second. I second. second that. Any further okay, discussion? No. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Here, Fred, sign this. Yeah, help us find our way out of that paper bag. Okay. Select board DAs on updates. Uh, I would have a report on um, liaison to the capital committee, but given the hour, I'm not going to give it. I will hold yeah. them for the next meeting. Um, the you senior center is awesome. The They've got lots of stuff going on. They just put out a new newsletter. Check their website. It's, uh, they're doing all kinds of stuff. And the abbreviated town administrator updates. Um, I'll save the, the first one for last. Uh, shared conservation agent meeting. Um, I'll be attending that meeting on September 14th. To talk about possibility of a shared conservation agent between multiple towns. Um, Whitley's first cannibal retail shop, cannabis cannibal. retail shop, open. Oh, you're going to cannibal shop? A cannibal <laughs> shop. <laughs> cannabis retail cannibal shop. Retail. Don't combine those words. <laughs> um, uh, last week, right? Yeah. Last week. So um, we should be, uh, I started hearing the coins, you know, clicking in. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and they haven't even changed their name yet. And they have not changed their name yet. Um, emergency culvert repair on Williamsburg Road has been completed. Um, not without some fanfare and okay. griping, but it has been completed. Um, there is, we do have uh, one uh, vacancy on the Board of Assessors now. Um, yeah. Catherine, mm -hmm. uh, it's um, late. Yeah, I know. In, in Stockholm, it's two fifteen a.m. Uh, <laughs> um, we so have a vacancy on the board. Of we assessors. have a vacancy on the board of assessors, um, so we're looking for people who might be interested in filling that position. Um, so array at the town offices. Uh, one of their um, engineering design people came out and walked around the building and walked through all the electrical stuff, and um, so they're looking out there uh, the designs that they owe us. Um, okay. For that. 
Uh, personnel policy revisions. Um, I do not have those yet. Um, I have been asked for an extension of that work um, by a week or two, and I said that that would be okay because um, they claimed that there was some new information that came out that they need to go back to some yeah. revisions. Um, and then uh, when we have to meet with the water department, they have a loan payoff for the water merger project in October that they need to figure out how they're going to pay that back yeah. or if they're going to do some type of short-term borrowing instrument to, okay. to, to pay that off. Um, and the first one is recognition of recent retirements. And I was wondering if the board wants to do anything um, separate and apart from what has already been done for some of the folks who have retired and what would that be? Um, I would bring some sort of certificate that thinking John Hammond and Lynn in particular, um, that there should be some sort of official recognition from the board of their service. And, yeah. Uh, at, yeah, no, at a select board meeting, it doesn't have to be the next meeting. Could be okay. There's no timetable. I think at some point I was at John's retirement thing at yeah. the fire department, and there was a nice presentation from the fire department and, <laughs> and Natalie Blay and nothing from the select board. And I was sitting there going, "There really should be something." Mm -hmm. Do so, we typically try to do it without spending too much money? Like, because I'm thinking a certificate is nice, but then what do you do with it? Like, we haven't had a retirement in a long time. We're not good at a few days. Yeah. I think. Like, do you get a, a, a nice book or a, something useful? Or... Thank you. Gift card. Gift card to wait. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. We, we, we don't have yeah. to make that decision. Yeah. The answer is yes, but what? Okay. Yes, okay. but what? Well, we'll, yeah. we'll come up with some ideas. And, and, and yeah. I, when we aim for the last meeting in September for that, okay. yeah. doesn't good. necessarily go on the agenda yet until we yeah. have an idea. Anything else, Brian? Yeah, just just quickly. Yeah, because somebody mentioned Pete Boss uh, earlier. Uh, the water commissioners are are voting on Thursday whether to um, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, take part in the there's there's class action lawsuits that are happening right now um, with manufacturers of PFAS. Um, I believe that they're going to uh, elect to enter into that class action lawsuit because they're uh, um, eligible entity. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just want to mention that. And they should. There's already been a like a multi billion dollar settlement, which they would be, could take part in. So I would recommend that they yeah, would that be if the water district would essentially on behalf of the town. It would be the water department, but I mean they're the same, right? Yeah, well, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Essentially, whose name would be? I think since they're a department of the town. I mean, it says the water department. It's on, it's on the all the documents. Okay. Which would be under the control of the water commissioners. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Anything else from anyone? I move that we adjourn this fine meeting. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.